Joe Scarborough recently slammed the GOP on his uh, morning show over their constant criticism of Barack Obama in dealing with the ISIS threat, or ISIL, whatever you want to call them. Let's take a look at what he had to say. I wonder what my party wants. And I wonder this because there has been constant criticism of this president leading from behind. It's been constant criticism of him not doing enough early enough. I've been part of the criticism. I've used words like leading from behind. But now that the president of the United States is doing what we hear John McCain and Lindsey Graham and other Republicans say he should do, what's the response? It's criticism. It's either it's not enough or, oh, my God, he should have done this six months ago. I told him a year ago. Well, yes, yes. But the president's not leading from behind anymore on ISIS. No, no, he's not. He went in aggressively and prevented genocide from happening to a religious minority that had genocide practiced on 73 times before. No, no, he's not leading from behind there. He's not leading from behind. He's arming the Kurds, something that, of course, Republicans said they were for, but now they're not saying, thank you, Mr. President, for doing what we've been asking you to do. Don't know exactly why. Um, oh, yeah, uh, we aggressively worked to retake a dam from ISIS. I still all I heard this weekend was criticism of the commander in chief. That's fine, I guess, if that's what you want to do, if that gets you off, if that's, I mean, seriously, we're in the middle of a crisis and you want to talk about, like, what happened in the rearview mirror, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, gee, finally, Joe uh, Joe Scarborough seems to actually get it. No matter how much Barack Obama bends over backwards to please the Republican Party, they will always continue to bitch, piss, and moan because that's what our politics has come down to today. What do you think, Nick? Um, like It's pretty obvious that Joe Scarborough is exactly right because the rest of us have been saying the same fucking thing for the past, like, five years. A little late to the party, but good, because I think his voice carries a smidgen of weight. A tiny smidgen, not much, because you know everyone at Fox will go, Oh, Joe, he's on MSNBC, that liberal. It's like, but he even said, I wonder what my party wants. So he clearly identifies with the Republican Party. But they're not, it's, it's going to sound like that. I'll just snip that out, because that doesn't matter. That doesn't fit the narrative. No, this is... It's it's the reason he's coming out now too is because it's becoming so painfully obvious that that is that this is exactly what's happening that the goal is only to whine and complain and say that nothing he does is good enough and to be fair from the progressive side there's a lot that he's doing that isn't good enough but that's not the side that this issue is being debated on it's the side of is he doing enough right-wing policies and when he does them it's still you haven't done enough so it's it's so painfully obvious that even Joe fucking Scarborough can figure it out it's a carnival it's an embarrassment I am up here a Canadian and embarrassed for your country watching this all right so I think that the bigger problem we have is, as a culture is is that you know, we'll 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 skip past the part where Joe Scarborough was one of the you know big talking heads in the lead up to the war in Iraq, and like the idea of this all of a sudden I've I've figured out how to magically toe the line in the middle now, and I'm now a uniter, which is his new like book you know tour and everything like trying to be this uniter idea. I, I'm not against that idea actually. I think it's we need more of that. I've said this on your show a, a few times that we need more people saying that you can disrespect a person, you might not like somebody's ideas, but go after their ideas, stop going after them, and stop digging your heels in the sand to just completely blow up government because you don't like your guy's not in office. So yeah, the bigger problem I think you've got with the Joe Scarborough thing is as Joe Scarborough is moving that direction, as that show, um, and we can agree to disagree on the merits of Morning Joe, but... It's, you know, I think Russell Brand's appearance kind of demolished that show <laughs> once and for all. But the idea behind it, for me, is, is the ratings, which is really interesting to me. Because they're going in third now. So 
they're falling behind as I feel like CNN is trying to be a lot more opinionated and Fox News, we all know Fox News. And so that's what interests me a lot is the idea that we talk a big game over here on the internet and we have our, you know, our, you know, fairly cult-like audiences and this, that, and the other. But when it comes to the broad public, it still seems to be the game of if you polarize, you do better. And there's still so much more hunger to be a polarizing force and the voters turn out for it on the right wing base. They want their, you know, their specific candidate. And even us on the left, you know, a lot of us want don't want Hillary Clinton. We want somebody like Elizabeth Warren. And so as long as that keeps playing to people, as long as that becomes, you know, the key factor, and as money in politics is still the number one thing that you have to worry about if you're trying to be in an office, I don't see how it's going to change. It's nice to hear it on, you know, MSNBC, but they do the exact same thing on the flip side. So it's it's really hard to like um, take anybody all that seriously in cable news right now, and especially Joe Scarborough trying to now be the uniter after a decade of doing the same thing. You gotta keep in mind this was the network that can jag. This is the network that also can Phil Donahue because they wanted to go right to have more like pro Iraq talk. So. You know, a uh, layer of uh, put, put a nice fine layer on this before we we take it too seriously. Well, yeah, I think they're all sort of playing a part, right? Joe Scarborough is is, is playing to an audience. I, I hear somewhere uh, rumors, of course, that you know he'll be making a run as an independent. Whatever. I don't know if I buy into it. I don't really really care all that much. I don't, I don't see anybody really voting for Joe Scarborough anyway. Again, but. Back to the, some of the substance of what he said. I mean, he he obviously understands the problem. They all understand the problem. It's there's what motivation is there to fix it, right? There is no motivation to fix it really, unless it appeals to 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 the media demographic in the base. And it's so weird when you think about MSNBC having a, a Republican on in the morning. It seems kind of strange. And when you think about the Fox angle. Those people, what you had said earlier, Nick, about you know the people over on Fox. Oh, that Joe, he's a liberal. He's got two people that watch him anyway. Well, yeah, <laughs> probably right. And you know maybe they'll they'll be all like, well, he's he's been working over at MSNBC, so he's got that liberal taint. So that's why he's saying all these crazy things like, hey, maybe we should stand behind our commander in chief in a time of war. Hmm. If you think your commander in chief is freaking wrong, then criticize him for it. The thing you shouldn't do is criticize him when he does exactly what you wanted. That's well, what's remember, the joke. This is, this is the party that's suing Obama for for doing something that they told him to do. Like you can't please these people. These people, like these Republicans, cannot be pleased. They're like. You know, do what do what we want you to do. We want to get ninety five percent. Well, actually, we got ninety percent, ninety five percent of what we wanted. Now well, we're still not happy. We're gonna go for that extra five percent just because we can. And that's the whole point of this, of really bringing this up, is how Barack Obama is never gonna get anywhere if he continues to do Republican things. He's gonna continue to get this kind of criticism, and. You know, look, Joe Scarborough, I got to give him a little tiny bit of credit for actually saying that. Like, hey, you're criticizing him for doing exactly what we want him to do as Republicans. Maybe you could tone it down a little bit because he sound like idiots. I don't know. I think you have to be really careful here, though, too, because, you know, it's funny you said I wouldn't vote for Joe Scarborough. At this point, if you ran as a Republican, I think we do need to vote for Joe Scarborough in certain ways. And I'll, I'll explain why is that those people on the right, whether you, you know, I'm not suggesting left-wing folks vote for him, but I'm saying that those guys are needed on the other side. And this is what I think, you know, you can criticize Obama for not catching on a little bit, you know, faster that, hey, maybe I can actually, you know, put an olive branch out to these folks. Maybe they're always going to knock it down. But I do admire the, like, attempts to keep what the, you know, idea of government was supposed to be before it became, like, kamikaze government. And where we're literally just like deciding to, to blow things up because, as I said before, it's not our guy. But the the football goalpost, we always talk about this on our show, 
they keep moving so far to the right that it is getting scary who we start considering liberal and who we start considering even centrist. Um, because the, the the idea of these people howl at the moon all the time on this channel, on all the on, on Fox News about how things are activist judges and everybody's activists and the whole thing's the world the whole world's liberal. How you know if you if you go down the list of you know what people believe in, they're representing such a narrow part of the population. It, and it, they're legislating so vastly for that part. It's really scary that it works. And, you know, we've seen it, you know, going straight through to the idea of having a, an attack ad with, you know, a, an image of somebody who's about to get beheaded, like, using that as somehow a political bait. Like, there is no bottom to this pit anymore. You could argue maybe there never was, but it really is something that people need to get together on, and whether you want to talk about money out of politics. But that rally for sanity that John Stewart had, I think, needs to be an annual thing. Because things are, you know, you're never going to get good government if you can't have some sort of bipartisanship at all.